Okay, so here's another problem where they want us to pull some information out of it and then uh, solve related rates kind of problem. So let's read through first and find out what information they're telling us. We want to make a list of that information first before we jump into anything else. A stone is dropped into a puddle causing ripples in the form of concentric circles. The radius of the outer ripple is increasing at a rate of two centimeters per second. Okay, now this is the first number that they give us. Let's identify what kind of variable that's going to be. Radius increasing at a rate of. Okay, so that rate involving the radius, that's going to be dr dt, the rate at which r is changing with respect to time. They tell us that. They tell us that's equal to 2. Okay, so that's the first number they give us. When the radius is 0.5 meters, okay, so now they tell us what the radius is. Okay, but let's, let's slow down. Let's not write 0.5. The reason why is because we need to make sure that everything is in terms of the same units. So you got to be careful on this kind of problem. This right here, I don't want to change that. This is in terms of centimeters per second. So I want to have everything else all be in terms of centimeters. So I need to change this 0.5 meters. If I want to change it to centimeters, I got to move the decimal two places to the right. So actually I want to use 50 centimeters not meters, okay? So be careful, make sure everything's all in terms of the same units when you do that. R is 50 centimeters, okay? At what rate is the total area changing with respect to time? This means with respect to. All right, what is it they're asking us to find? That is actually gonna be dA dt. That's the variable that they want us to know, the area of the water changing with respect to time. Okay, so this is the information that's been provided. Now. We need to figure out what formula that we're going to use here to take the derivative of both sides with respect to time. Sometimes they give you the formula, a lot of times they don't. You have to read through the information and figure out what it is they want you to find. Back here it says we're causing ripples in the form of circles and we want area. That means they probably want us to find the area of a circle. So we need to know the formula for that. Now in a test or quiz I'm going to provide that information for you, but when you're going through homework, you'll have to kind of find that formula on your own. But you should remember that, and they're listed in the text also, your area is pi r squared. This is the main formula I'm gonna be working with here when I take the derivative of both sides using implicit. Let's do that right now. So the derivative of the left-hand side is just gonna be dA dt. That's what we're trying to solve for. We have pi, and then I'm going to multiply it by the derivative of r squared. This is going to involve chain rule. Two is going to come down front. I have r, and then don't forget about the chain rule. Derivative of the outside, and then derivative of the inside is dr dt. This is the main formula I'm going to be plugging information into. So now I want to plug the numbers in to get the answer for dA dt. All right, so I have a two pi. My radius is 50 centimeters, okay? And then my dr dt is given as two centimeters per second. Okay, so uh, let's talk about what units will be on our answer. These are the numbers that we're multiplying together, and if we do that and multiply it, we're gonna get, uh, for this one, uh, 200 pi, okay? So 200 pi, but this is in terms of centimeters. This is centimeters per second. When you multiply that together, we're going to get centimeters squared per second. Now that makes sense because when you're talking about an area, an area is always in terms of, for instance, square footage, things like that, so it should be a square unit. Could I have changed it into meters? I could have, but then I would have had to change this one over into meters, but I chose to, to make it all in terms of centimeters. The question itself, when you're working these problems out, if you're working the, doing the online homework system, it'll tell you how they want their answer. So just pay close attention to the units when you get your answer. Okay, let's read through this related rates problem. We're gonna write down the information, and then once we have that, we're gonna do some implicit differentiation with respect to time. In this case, the formula has already been provided for us. The volume of the sphere is given to us as that. 
Let's keep reading. The radius is changing at a rate of two inches per minute. What is that? That is dr dt. So dr dt is given as two inches per minute. Let's find out. Uh, let's look at what else they're giving us. Find the rate. The volume is changing. Okay, now that is dv dt, and that's the unknown here. They're asking us to solve for that one. When the radius is six inches. Okay, we want to make sure the units match up. Inches there, and there's inches on that one. So we can write uh, six inches. So this is everything that the question provides. So now it's just a matter of taking the derivative of both sides with respect to time. We'll do that to this one here. Okay, so the left-hand side, you'll get dv dt. Over here, we have a four-thirds pi, which is a constant. So I'll just go ahead and leave that. Four pi over three. And then I'm gonna do the derivative of r cubed. That requires the chain rule. The three is gonna come down. We have r and squared. Don't forget to multiply by derivative of the inside. We're gonna do a little simplifying. The threes are gonna cancel there. So now I get dv dt is equal to four pi r squared and then times dr dt. Last thing we do now that we've done the implicit differentiation, just plug in the values and that's gonna allow us to solve for dv dt, which is what they're asking us for. 4 pi and then the r squared, you get 6 squared there, and then times dr dt, dr dt is given as uh, 2. So now for dv dt, we're going to multiply all this together, okay, so I get 36 times 2 times 4, all that's going to be 288, so I have a 288 pi, it's okay to leave your answers in terms of pi here. But what about the units? Okay, well, I have a my inches here, this is inches squared. I'm multiplying by dr dt, which is in terms of inches. So I get inches cubed here, and then the time is gonna be in terms of minutes because this right here was uh, the inches over minute here. This makes sense also because a volume should be in terms of cubic units. So I have 288 pi cubic inches per minute. That's your final answer.